have to bingo And the boys are getting stink all We think no more to bingo On a Saturday, Saturday night the unmistakable sound of Stomp and Tom Connors because Canada said goodbye to the music icon this week. The country folk singer passed away at the age of 77. Long before Canada fell in love with Stomp and Tom, he was just a young man hitching across the country. With no money in his pocket and years before he was famous, Tom Connors landed in Timmins, a mining town in northern Ontario. And as legend goes, it was a bartender at the Maple Leaf Hotel who spotted his true talent. That bartender's name is Gate Lapine, and we tracked him down in Ottawa. Gate, welcome to Day 6. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm great. I'm sorry for your loss, Gate. Would you take Thank us you. back to Timmins uh, the, that, that, that night in October of 1964 when you first laid eyes yeah. on Tom Connors? Okay, we're going to 64, Northern Ontario, Timmins. I'm bartender at the Maple Leaf Hotel, and it's a cold night, half rain, half snow. Yeah. And the stranger walks in with a guitar, lanky looking, and he's looking around and walks towards the bar and he asked me where the Sally Ann is. I said, well, you missed it. It's just a block down the road. He says, well, I missed it. He says, I just come from an hotel. I can't mention the hotel, but he threw him out. Hmm. He, thought, he thought he was a bum. Okay. And he threw him in the street. And he says, the only thing that drew me in here is this hotel is called the Maple Leaf. And the Maple Leaf flashing kind of did something to him. It's very strange, like, you know. Hmm. So he walked in because of that maple leaf. Right. So you he know, was a patriot like, even then. Yeah. Or oh, even then. Yeah. He had a chike across the country writing little songs here and there. And, and the maple leaf. Yeah. And that's what drew him in. And he had a guitar with him? Yeah. He had an old guitar and a beat up case. And he looked uh, look hungry, I'll tell you. And you were tending bar. And I'm bartender and he walks in. So uh, I said, wait, before I show you where the Sally Ann is, I says, uh, you want to talk a little bit? He says, well, I think I'll have a beer. So I popped a beer. There was no draft on that side, mm. ladies' side in those days. Mm -hmm. So I opened the beer. It was 35 cents, and he emptied his pockets, and it was a nickel short. So he says, put the cap back on, sir, and I'll head for the Sally Ann. I says, no, never mind the nickel. I says, what the heck? I'll throw in the nickel and sip your beer. He thanks me, and he says, well, I think I'll find a bed, and in the morning I'm, I'm hitchhiking to uh, B.C., mm -hmm. He's from the East Coast, and he wants to cross Canada before the winter sets in. So he starts to walk down, and I says, uh, Hey, buddy, uh, there's another beer coming if you open that case and show us the guitar and sing a song, maybe. Well, he says, I can handle another beer. <laughs> <laughs> he loved his beer. And Tom could handle beer, which I found out later. <laughs> <laughs> so I had more than one with him over the years. Oh, Anyhow, yeah. so he sits down. And while he opens the case, I open another bottle of beer. He says, what well, he cranks the guitar, tunes it up, an old beat-up guitar, and there was a shirt around the neck. That was a spare shirt. He had a shaving kit, and that was all he had to his name. Hmm. And a pair of socks in there. <laughs> wow. And that was it. So he cranks it up, an old Gibson guitar, beat-up. He says, what do you guys want to hear? And one of my bartenders, Curly, says, uh, of all the songs to pick, he says, pick me up on your way down too much. He sings it, word for word. Huh. Sings another one, word for word. Then I throw in a, a wrench and it works. And I says, I'm going to fix this guy up because I write songs myself and I do music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I says, uh, I, I've been everywhere, and which is a very tough song to sing. Yeah. He sings it, and he puts a whole bunch of Canadian towns in there. <laughs> wow. And I says, here's another beer. And I says, don't move. So I went in the back, talked to the owner. I says, I got a character in there. Just blew in town, and I says, he's singing songs, and his voice is pretty gravel, but there's something about him, you know. I recognize something in town. Eh? Yeah. So... Uh, the boss didn't want, you know, reluctant, and he says, well, you know, he doesn't seem that great. And I said, well, I says, he's been sleeping in the gutter about four days. <laughs> so, yeah, he's in bad shape. He's hungry. Give him a bed and a soup and let him sing for the folks for a few days and, you know, give him a dollar or whatever. Well, he says, we'll keep him for two, three days, then he can go. And that's the way it started. I brought him to his room. We had a good talk, shook his hand. When he saw the bed, he, he had tears in his eyes. He says, you mean that's my bed? I haven't seen one of these in 
months. Wow. Not that not that clean, he says. And it wasn't the shuttle or you, but it was it was all right. And he stayed then at the Maple yeah. Leaf Hotel in Timmins for 14 months. Then it, it went to 14 months. First thing you know, we built a little stage and then uh, knocked down the wall and expanded and uh, he filled the place right up. And you became pretty good friends over that time. What, oh, we, what, what did you talk about? Oh, life and everything. Every night I was in his room, we'd talk till the sun would come up in the morning for 14 months. Sometimes we'd cry, sometimes we'd laugh and... Did you get a sense of, of his beginnings, of, of the life that he had as a young person? Yeah. Oh, yes, definitely. Oh, yeah. He, and he told me everything. I mean, he really opened up to me. And tell, tell us a little bit about those early years, because they weren't easy. Oh, they weren't easy. Uh, it, they weren't easy. He, his mom, it was very tough, very tough. She'd leave him on the side, and he ended up, he was adopted, and they brought him to PEI, where he lived on a farm and work on a farm and grew up there and i guess when he was 14 he took off he crossed this country very young he crossed the country several times but back and forth and searching and music in his head and kind of lost and oh yeah he's, he's incredible but even though th these were obviously hard times for him he yeah. th his love of the country yeah. came out of those trips and what what did he say about that well, he says, when I saw the mountains, when I saw the prairies, when I, I says, they're mine. Even if I'm a bum or they're mine. It, I'm a Canadian. And he'd cry and he'd sit there with a piece of paper and doodle something about, P, you know, like Saskatchewan or wherever he was. And that's how the little song started to come out. He fell in love with the country. You, you were friends with him <laughs> for 50 years, Gate. Was there a side to him that you think Canadians didn't get to see? Well, yes, but... Uh, <laughs> I knew Tom, the man, Tom Connors, yeah. and people know Stompin' Tom, which is the product, mm -hmm. but I knew, I knew the man. There's two different things here. I knew the inside of Tom and the tears and the feeling, and, and people know, well, it's Stompin' Tom, but there's two, two things going on here, and yeah, there's many sides they didn't see, his hurt, his, his, his feelings, and the... You know, he, he's a one-track mind, you know, all the time. He, if he hits one problem, he sticks on it, and he won't move till it's done. And I'm all over the place. He used to call me multi-track. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and him and I were total opposites. So opposites attract each other, and then they want to get away from each other. <laughs> <laughs> well, but as, as he became, I mean, he was became so successful, did, oh, did things he, change about him, or did he stay the no, same to you? Same thing. The same Tom that I met on 64, the same, same thing. You think it just came off a boxcar. So that beer that you gave him, that, that five cents yeah. uh, that, that you forgave from that beer, <laughs> yeah. how, how did he pay you back for that? He brought me to Europe, me and the wife, 14 countries. Oh, nice. Me and the wife, we went all over the place. We rented a van and Tom paid the whole shot. He says, that's for the soup and the bed and the nickel. <laughs> that's Tom Connors, eh? That wow. was a pretty good investment on your part. Uh, yeah, good thing I didn't put that nickel in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> Gay Lapina, I, I thank you for talking to us, and thank you for being among the first to recognize a musical genius and a great Canadian. Oh, you're welcome, sir. Anytime at all. Thank you. And thank you, Canada, for taking care of my buddy. Gate Lapine is the bartender from Timmins, Ontario, who gave Stomp and Tom Connors his first real break almost 50 years ago. As with so many of his life experiences, Stomp and Tom turned this one into song. That fateful night with Gate Lapine is immortalized in the Ballad of Stomp and Tom. Then one night in Timmins Town, North Ontario, they said if you can sing we'll keep you around for a week or so. I packed the place for 14 months and before they let me go I'm driving a car, I got a new guitar and I'm singing on the radio.